So again, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard with what looks to be a 9x12 canvas, I'm guessing, although it could be 11 by 14 I think that's an 11 by 14 And this is probably an 8 eight by 10 And they are going to get recycled. First of all, I'm going to take the colors that I just shook up and spend an hour cleaning out the threads. And I don't really want that that way. I'm going to take my little tiny cotton hemmed piece of t-shirt material, thank you Vanessa, and I'm going to drag it over some colors I add. I don't want to obliterate this entire design by any stretch of the imagination. I think I'm going to use some black. I'm definitely going to use some colors that have, uh, that are as dramatically different in tone as I can get them from where I'm at. Saying that <laughs> and meaning it <laughs> might be two different things. This is a magenta that I just mixed up from several different paints, including some neon um, artist loft and some golden magenta and uh, some Blick. Somebody sent me some Blick. Okay, so my colors didn't change that much. I see that. <laughs> Never mind. I'm going to continue on in any case. And I'm not making any thorough coverage because I really want to see what's going to happen. I want some gold in there. And there's my gold. I would like quite a bit of gold in there, so why don't I just do that? And if I put my glasses on my face instead of on my head, I might be able to see. Hey, you know what? I don't need to swipe that. That's just cool right like it is. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that, didn't you? All right, so let's start. And I think it's a safe bet that the, uh, the gloss enamel that I've been using is the tickets. If I can find it, there it is. So why don't I just go from this end. I really just want to put it on the rag, to tell you the truth. But I think I can do maybe just a little bit of that in there, just as a precautionary or as a safety net, you know. I really want some turquoise in there. I guess I just changed my mind about that. Let's put some, uh, some bright and brilliant turquoise. I think that was an Art Mines. I'm still liking the way it looks before I swipe. Let's hope the swipe isn't not impressive, because it would be nice if it was. So this is a very wet little rag, and I'm not going to worry about that, because I need it to be heavy enough to pull. I'm going to roll up the excess, which you cannot see, and I'm going to dip the hem, which you can see. The water probably makes a huge difference. So there's one swipe down. And it just makes me want to put an awful lot more of that magenta in there because I didn't get as much as I want. So maybe the next one will have magenta and this cobalt blue with some iridescent medium in it which is not the surgeon. I believe it was the, um, the golden product. So what other color should I have in there? That's, I like that. That's sweet. I think it's because it's so wet. Now I've got another enamel. It's a gloss enamel. It's a great color. You know what? I'm going to put some of that black in there. I think that's the ticket. The black makes sure that I get the cells. The, the enamel is the bomb as far as that goes. kind of want some white too. Let's just take a chance on that. That's not an enamel. That's just my regular artist loft and uh, house paint from Walmart semi-gloss half and half. Let's go from the same direction. Do I want some green in there? Boy, I kind of do. <laughs> there goes my just two colors theory again. I'm just loving the jewel tones. This was a cool painting at the time, but it was first year and uh, it just needed some help. 
to give it dimension or depth or just some interest in general. But I love those those big lumpy lacy cells in the background. And I really don't have any problem leaving the spaces. So I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to just use some more of that paint. And what do I... I like the orange, and the orange is good on this side. I've got some purple I like too. I've got some gorgeous purple. I can't remember... No, that's that's got some iridescent pearl in it from Golden. Pearl Fine. And I'm going to continue with my gold. I should have put some in the middle. I don't think it's going to matter. I think it'll be alright. I love that that showed up so well over there. So more is definitely more. I'd like to drag this one a little a little wider on its path of trajectory. <laughs> Big words are my friends. I like them. Yeah, I know, I'm weird. Now, how do I like the white in the middle? The white was okay. The white goes from here to here. There's not a lot of it. Um, who knows? I could just continue to swipe this. This is a folk art color shift that I added, Unicorn Spit, which is on my Amazon link below Show More underneath the video. Um, it's just a stain that I use uh, quite frequently to change up the color of something that I'm not sure I love the color of as it is. Maybe a little more purple. Do I want some white? Do I want some black? What do I want? Maybe I want white and black. Now this is the enamel again. And it's just, I'm just putting little dabs in there to encourage cell production. Not that the damp cotton rag doesn't almost always do that, because it does. Do I want anything else? I kind of do. I'm going a little wider than I was on the other stripes, though. And the colors aren't that changed from what's there, but I really like it. Do I want some green? I don't mind that turquoise over there. There's not much. It's not really... It's not really showing that much. We'll see what happens. I kind of want something weird, like some red. Oh, that's it. That's what I want. Right there. There's more colors on this side. Hopefully it'll be all right. So, my, my rag was especially wet today, and I have to choose right now, and I am going to choose right now. I'm going to put the black down as my swipe color. Again on this side. I'm going to dip that rag in. Just pull it up. Try and keep the bottom somewhat level on the surface. That's pretty. Not so sure about that yellow over there. Not sure what I can do about it either. I'm going to roll up the back of that and take the paint that I've got on there. Well, that didn't, that doesn't look great. But, um, quick like a bunny, I'm going to try and fix it. Maybe a clean rag? Throw that one in the bucket. Maybe slightly less damp this time. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely liking the contrast between the swiped areas and the areas in the back. So I'm just going to fold this in half so it's half the width and then roll it up. And then I'm going to use some of that black enamel again. Maybe I'm going to do it twice, three times. I need a flat spot though without any excess foldage. Is that a word? <laughs> if it's not, it is now. Alright, as far as I'm concerned, that that's a pretty good blend. It's not perfect. 
now it's perfect. So that's number one, and we have six minutes left, so I'm gonna hit this quick with a torch to release any bubbles that might be caught in the paint, and uh, also to encourage any cells to form. So that's one painting that wasn't bad, but is a lot better in my opinion, a lot more fun. Someday I'm gonna use this technique to uh, to put areas in scapes, because I've been watching Erin Hansen on Instagram, and she makes the most incredible artworks. Just amazing, and she's extremely prolific, like someone you know, and uh, she's she's definitely a complete genius, and I recommend taking a, taking a gander at her. So I'm gonna put this aside. I don't think it's gonna drip too bad, no matter what I do right now. So I'm gonna take a chance on it being unlevel. I may regret that decision, but, um, what I really want is to take what I just learned and use it to create something new and different in a very fast swipe, hopefully, with my much wider rag, which I had here a moment ago and has gone where? Yeah, I see it. I'm going to have to fold it. So I have almost enough colors. I kind of think I might want a little bit of this. We're just going to have some fun now. Actually, we'll have a little bit of everything, please. <laughs> As per usual. Because I used to spread everything for a swipe with a spatula and using up an already done canvas wasn't necessarily the gig. That's an awful lot of orange there. The nice thing about a dry canvas is you can move colors on it very easily. You could probably just go long <laughs> if you wanted to. So being that I just had somebody ask to buy a painting that I already sold, and it was in my for my first year, it was um, Gold Glory. I wish one of these was shorter, longer. I'll be back in a second. Here's my rag. I'm gonna lead that paint right over to the edge. And I might want more of it. I want, might wanna put it right in there, but I gotta find out if this is gonna work. This is my dog food bag, by the way. And usually, if I've, I've been doing a lot of blooms lately, usually I'll use my uh, my cottage cheese lids to prop a painting up with. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. Why why just talk about it? Why not just do that? Just because I can. Hey, that's the name of my first book under show more under the video on the Amazon link, the first blue link. All right. Not sure how this is going to work. Definitely not sure about the edges. It's a warm day, so I better move. Yes, I'm sticking my fingers in there. I want some white. That must be why, I, why I'm dilly-dallying. I'm not just gonna use white either. I'm gonna use some of this gloss enamel from Folk Art. But hopefully it won't be too much because a little goes a long, long way. What am I missing? Something? I am missing something. I am missing dark purple. Okay, who needs to swipe? <laughs> Not me. I might drip this too. So is this wide enough? That is perfectly wide enough. So I'm going to just rest that for a moment in an unmentionable place and stick it right so it can absorb some of that gold color. Got the full rainbow effect in there. Because it's raised up on the cottage cheese container, it's a lot easier for me to go ahead and uh, tap off my sides. I kind of figured because it's colored in the background, if it doesn't all stick, it's okay. I'm waiting to see what the enamel will do. I think there's a good chance that I had a spray coat of something on here. I'm just gonna tap over this end because my rag didn't go all the way down. 
This is a good experiment to see what you can do. I'm going to try the torch. They're not big cells. It didn't really cover all the way to the other end, but that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of doing something about that. Sticking my finger in those little holes. They look less like cells and more like holes to me. This might be the perfect time to, dry, to, 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 try, to try some drip stuff. Because I can, and I want to, and I like dripping stuff. <laughs> They're good colors, and there's nothing to lose. I'm not going to be scraping anything. I might be tempted to throw a basting brush in or something. I've got two minutes left to tell you guys whatever I'm going to tell you, which is, uh, I don't know yet. I do sell my artwork. I do give classes at the house in Spring Hill. And again, I'm going to stick my finger in there. I'm going to use a basting brush. I kind of like that, actually. I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm inclined to go ahead and put some more dots up here. Um, I have Facebook groups. Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group is for students. Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Totes and more. You might find the Shop Now button interesting that will take you to Farnard America and Pixels.com where I have been posting my stuff since 2013. I think a little bit more. I don't know if this will run got some nice cells up there, but the middle didn't sell up as much as I thought it was going to. So I'm very inclined to just have my way with my painting. Make it cute. No matter what. That's neat. You know what? I like that. I think a, a, a few more little things and I'll be good to go. Love this folk art neon purple. I think it was actually a matte one I got by accident. Let's, let's make both sides the same. So I've been cheating lately, you know, using a basting brush to save things or to fast, fast fix the end. So I just broke my rule again and torched and then put some paint in, but fortunately the paint is wet enough. I don't think that those little spots are going to be a problem, although I do keep trying to fix them. So I kind of like that anyway. And I'm not sure whether I should take a chance on the dots. In any case, I guess we're done. And I've got one minute left to tell you whatever I'm going to tell you. And that would be, if you don't have notifications, you might want to check and turn them on. If you want to help save my YouTube channel, the only thing the YouTube algorithm understands and responds to is if you watch my videos longer. So if you'd like to do that, that'd be great. I have a drawing. It's on the end screens of every video. Um, on the exhibition video, you'll find the 15 paintings you can choose three of if you're next month's drawing winner. Um, I'm um, um. I keep umming. Please give me a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. I love your comments. You guys keep my morale up. Thank you for the contributions that have kept me painting since for a couple of years. When it turns April, it'll be two years in 2020. My paint pouring recipe is underneath the video. And I love you guys. There's over 85,500 of you. I hope you keep coming back. Tomorrow's a new day. You can find Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group. You can find tomorrow's video there and on the community board on my YouTube channel. And I might just keep my eye on this for a few minutes, but um, I don't mind any of what's happened. I'll see you guys in on. Bye for now. This is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. Out. And I'm still here and you're still here. Wow. I'm going to uh, I'm going to focus on that. And I'll say I'll see you in on. Bye for now. Priscilla out.